You have to watch this confrontation between a State Department spokesperson and a reporter for the Associated Press who miraculously does his job and pushes back against the government mouthpiece, demanding actual evidence of their claims that Russia is planning an eminent false flag attack in order to use as a pretext to invade Ukraine. We have previously noted our strong concerns regarding Russian disinformation and the likelihood that Moscow might create, seek to create, a false flag operation to initiate military activity. Now, we can say that the United States has information that Russia is planning to stage fabricated attacks by Ukrainian military or intelligence forces as a pretext for a further invasion of Ukraine. One possible option the Russians are considering, and which we made public today, involves the production of a propaganda video, a video with graphic scenes of false explosions depicting cor corpses, crisis actors pretending to be mourners, and images of destroyed locations or military equipment, entirely fabrica fabricated by Russian intelligence. What is the evidence that they, I mean, this is like crisis actors, really? This is like Alex Jones territory you're getting into now. Um, what evidence do you have to support the idea that there is some propaganda film in the, in, in the making? Matt, this is derived uh, from information known to the U.S. government, intelligence information that we have declassified. I think you well, know. Okay, well, where, where is it? Where, where is this information? It is intelligence information that we have declassified. Well, where is it? Where is the declassified information? I just delivered it. But, no, you made a series of allegations and would statements. You, would you like us to print it out the topper? Because you will see a transcript of this briefing that you can print out for that's, yourself. That's not evidence, Ned. That's you saying it. That's not evidence. I'm sorry. <laughs> what would you like, Matt? I, I would like to see some proof that you, that, 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 that you can show that... that Matt, you have that, been that, that shows you, that 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 you, shows that the Russians are doing this. Ned, I've been doing this for. A I long know that time, was my point. As, you as, you as have you, know. you you have been doing this for quite a while. You know I that have. when we declassify intelligence That's information, right. and I we do so in, in a means. In Iraq, we do and so. I, and, we do so and with an eye to that, protecting that sources and methods. Is not going to fall. I, I remember a lot of things. So where, where where is the declassified information other than you coming out here and saying? Matt, I'm sorry you don't like the format, uh, but we have it's declassified. It's not the format; it's the content. I'm it's, sorry you don't like the content. I'm sorry you. I'm sorry like you are doubting this. the information that is in the possession of the U.S. government. No, I, I, what I'm telling you is that this is information that's available to us. We are making it available to you uh, in order uh, for a couple reasons. One is to attempt to deter the Russians from going ahead with this activity. Two, in the event we're not able to do that, in the event the Russians do go ahead with this, to make it clear as day, to lay bare the fact that this has always been an attempt on the part of the Russian Federation to fabricate a pretext. Yeah, but you don't have any, any evidence to back it up other than what you're saying. It's like you're saying, we think we, we, we have information that the Russians may do this. But you won't tell us what the information well, is, that, and then when, when, that, when you're that, asked, that, that is the idea behind when, deterrence, Matt. When, that is the when, idea when behind asked, deterrence. And when it is asked, our hope that the Russians don't go forward with this. When the information is, you say, "I just gave it to you." I, I'm not buying into Russian propaganda, but I'm also not going to buy into an, I'm not accusa an accusation. To. Yes, you are. You're saying the proof is that I just said it. Uh, it is uh, yeah, no. But you're, but you're saying it's a fact, and that, it, that you have proof. And then you can't offer any proof and to, to, to show that it's fact. I'll drop it. But I think we Thank should you. move on. Yeah. That's the gist of it. The entire exchange goes on for about 10 minutes. And as you can see, it's quite incredible, especially since I didn't know there were any reporters left in America other than Peter Ducey and James O'Keefe. A false flag, if you're not familiar with it, is basically a military term for a frame job. When a government, an organization, or even an individual commits a crime, but makes it look like it was done by someone else. The term stems from a military painting the flag of the opposing army on their aircraft or equipment so that when they do certain things, it looks like it was the other guy. And like Matt Lee, the Associated Press reporter there said, most of us remember the weapons of mass destruction hoax, which got us into the war in Iraq. Technically, that wasn't a false flag. That was classic disinformation with the yellow cake uranium documents being forged and then Colin Powell going in front of the United Nations with his fake anthrax and duping the country into supporting a war that later everyone regretted once the truth came out. 
Well, I mean, everyone except for the conspirators, the neocons. But what most Americans don't know is before that, when the Bush administration was brainstorming lies to get us into that war, one of the ideas that they floated was to take a drone and then paint it up like a United Nations plane and then fly it into Saddam Hussein's airspace to bait him into shooting it down and then use that as the pretext to go in and invade. That's a false flag. And then later to expand the war on terror even more, remember it started in Afghanistan after 9-11 to supposedly go and get Osama bin Laden and Al Qaeda. And then it morphed into the Iraq war because Saddam Hussein was building the weapons of mass destruction. And then they wanted to expand it into even more countries like Iran. And according to Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Seymour Hearst, Dick Cheney proposed the false flag in the Straits of Hormuz. He wanted to have Navy SEALs paint up a couple American PT boats as if they were Iranian boats and then covertly attack our actual ships and then blame that attack on Iran so we could invade them. And back in the 1960s, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, which are the heads of the different military branches, all approved a false flag attack, which would have involved the CIA blowing up buildings in Miami and aircraft, and then blaming Cuba, making it look like it was the communists and Fidel Castro as a pretext to go and invade. But thankfully, President Kennedy said it was crazy and rejected it. The Nazis did the Glywitz incident, which was a state attack on a radio station which made it look like it was attacked by Poland which then they used as justification to go and invade them. Another certain little country did what's called the Operation Susanna or the Levon Affair which is a fascinating false flag everyone should look into. Of course these are things that brand name Republicans and corporate conservatives will never cover because well they're cowards. So is Russia planning a false flag to use as a pretext a justification to invade Ukraine? Maybe they are. And maybe our government has cried wolf so many times that nobody believes them or the media because that's a consequence of constantly lying when you finally do eventually, maybe, tell the truth, no one believes you. Or maybe this is just more disinformation concocted by the intelligence community to gin up support for us getting involved over there where we have no business being. There is a third option, however, perhaps they're planning on Ukraine firing the first shot. And if that happens, the public will then be primed to believe that Ukraine didn't start it. It was the Russians after all. It was that false flag attack that the intelligence agencies were warning about. You really don't know what to believe at this point if it comes from our government. So I believe nothing. I don't care one way or another about Russia or Ukraine. I care about America. Just like this great patriot who culture jammed MSNBC live on the air. Hey. Well, Craig, there are really three pillars to the president's crime strategy that he's eager to talk about here in New York today. First is what you... <laughs> That's great. That should happen every time you see a brand name news outlet out there doing a live shot. And you should also get one of my Let's Go Brandon shirts from my online store, markdice.com, or click the link in the description below. Let's go, Brandon. I agree. No, I really mean that. I'm not joking now, okay? Or if you're a Wheel of Fortune fan, you may prefer my F. Joe Biden, want to buy a vowel shirt, or any of my awesome designs. All available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out.